ad hominem. The ad hominem attack is a logical fallacy associated with trying to undermine the opponent's arguments by personal attacks, through attacking their character or skill level, etc. The ad hominem attack uses an accepted fact about a person to undermine their credibility despite the lack of causal connection between the two parts of the argument. Jacob attacks Emily's character instead of addressing the actual argument about climate change. This type of personal attack distracts from the debate and undermines meaningful discussion. <laughs> ambiguity. The fallacy of ambiguity refers to the use of a double meaning or an unclear descriptive applied to mislead or misrepresent the truth, then changing the meaning of the terms later. Oliver uses the word bat ambiguously, leading to confusion. Laura clarifies, highlighting the need for precise language to avoid misunderstandings in conversations. <laughs> anecdotal. The anecdotal fallacy uses a personal experience or an isolated example instead of a sound argument. Sophia cites a single example to argue against the health risks of smoking. But Lucas points out the weakness of relying on anecdotal evidence instead of comprehensive data. <laughs> appeal to authority. The fallacy of appeal to authority makes the argument that if one credible source believes something, then it must be true. Michael believes the theory must be true simply because an authority figure said so. Sarah challenges this by reminding us that authority can be wrong and evidence is key. <laughs> appeal to emotion. The fallacy of appeal to emotion makes a claim based on sympathy or empathetic instead of just or logical grounds. Grace tries to manipulate emotions to win support for their plan. Alex redirects the focus to the plan's merits, emphasizing logical reasoning over emotional appeals. Appeal to nature. The fallacy of appeal to nature refers to the argument that just because something is natural, that it is therefore valid, justified, or inevitable. Lily claims that natural medicines are inherently better, but Tom counters by questioning the assumption that natural means safer or more effective. This reminds us to question such broad generalizations. Bandwagon. This fallacy appeals to the popularity of something as a means of validating it. Mia argues that a product must be good because it's popular. Ethan highlights that popularity isn't a reliable indicator of quality, urging a more critical evaluation. <laughs> Begging the question. Begging the question presents circular arguments in which the conclusion is included in the premise of the argument. Ava assumes the conclusion that someone is honest within the premise, without proving it. Noah calls out this circular reasoning, pushing for actual evidence. <laughs> burden of proof. The fallacy of the burden of proof occurs when someone who is making a claim puts the burden of proof on another party to disprove what they are claiming. Emma demands that Ryan prove a negative, shifting the burden of proof. Ryan corrects this by stating that the person making a claim must provide the evidence. <laughs> circular reason. The fallacy of circular logic occurs when the one reasoning begins with a claim they are trying to conclude with. James uses circular reasoning by restating the conclusion as evidence. Anna points out this flaw, which does not provide any actual support for the claim. Equivocation. The fallacy of equivocation uses misleading terms of more than one meaning without clarifying which definition is intended in the scenario. Liam plays on the different meanings of light to make a misleading argument. Zoe clarifies the misuse of the word, spotlighting the need for clarity in definitions. <laughs> Etymological fallacy. The etymological fallacy poses that a certain term's original meaning applies to its colloquial and modern understanding in current circumstances. Isabella assumes the meaning of a word should remain static over time. Charlotte explains how meanings evolve, 
showing the importance of current usage over historical origins. <laughs> fallacy fallacy. This isn't an argument that is based on false claims, but is logically coherent. Owen wrongly concludes that a fallacy in an argument means the conclusion is false. Natalie corrects this misunderstanding, teaching us that a faulty argument can accidentally reach a true conclusion. <laughs> fallacy of composition and division. The fallacy of composition and division makes the assumption that one part of something will apply to the whole, or that the whole must apply to all the parts. Claire mistakenly assumes what's true for a part is true for the whole. Leah points out this error, illustrating the dangers of overgeneralization in both directions. False cause and false attribution. False cause refers to an argument where someone cites sequential events as evidence that the first event caused the second. False attribution happens when someone appeals to irrelevant, biased, or unqualified information. Emily confuses correlation with causation based on a coincidental timing. Maria challenges this assumption, reminding us to distinguish between correlation and true causation. False dilemma. Also called false dichotomy, fallacy of bifurcation, black or white fallacy. The false dilemma presents two alternative states as the only possibilities when more possibilities may exist. Daniel presents a choice as being between only two extremes. Jessica reveals the oversimplification, encouraging consideration of all possible options. Gambler's fallacy. The gambler's fallacy is based on the false belief that separate independent events can affect the likelihood of another random event, or that if something happens often, that it is less likely that the same will take place in the future. Jack expects a change in luck based on past events, showing a misunderstanding of independence and probabilities. David corrects this misconception, promoting rational decision-making. <laughs> genetic fallacy. The genetic fallacy reasons that one can accurately judge or assess something as good or bad based on where it originates from. Matthew dismisses an idea solely based on its source rather than its merits. Kevin advocates for evaluating ideas based on their content, regardless of where they come from. <laughs> loaded question. The loaded question arises by asking a question that presupposes a claim, so that it cannot be answered to without sounding guilty. Rachel uses a loaded question to trap Leah. Leah exposes the built-in assumption, highlighting the need for fairness in questioning. Middle ground. The middle ground fallacy argues that a compromise between two extremes must be reached to satisfy a situation. Julie assumes the truth must be in the middle of two opposing views. Amber challenges this assumption, reminding us that the truth can sometimes lie at one extreme or be entirely different. No true Scotsman. The no true Scotsman fallacy appeals to the purity of an ideal or standard as a way to dismiss relevant criticisms or flaws in your argument. Bella tries to exclude counterexamples from a generalization by redefining the criteria. Jason calls out the shifting of goalposts, emphasizing consistency in definitions. <laughs> personal incredulity. The fallacy of personal incredulity occurs when one finds a concept difficult to understand or simply does not fathom how it works then they conclude that it is likely untrue. Alice dismisses complex scientific concepts just because they are hard to understand. Brooks stresses that personal difficulty in understanding does not equate to falsehood. Red herring. The red herring fallacy focuses on arguing for an irrelevant topic with the intention of distracting the audience. This usually happens when the orator finds another topic easier to outline. Lucas diverts the argument to an unrelated topic to avoid addressing the original issue. Emily brings the focus back, underscoring the need to stay on topic. <laughs> Slippery slope. 
The slippery slope fallacy consists of arguments that reason if something S were to happen, then something else P will eventually occur. So we should prohibit S from happening. Natalie predicts extreme outcomes from a modest beginning without justification. Claire requests evidence for these claims, highlighting the need for rational linkages in arguments. <laughs> special pleading. The special pleading fallacy occurs when the orator ignores certain elements that are unhelpful for their claims, or when one asks for special considerations to be given them or one of their premises. Ava applies a standard to others, but exempts someone special without justification. Max calls out this inconsistency, demanding fairness in application. <laughs> Strawman. The strawman fallacy occurs when one misrepresents an argument so that it becomes easier to attack. Harper distorts Jordan's argument to make it easier to attack. Jordan clarifies their original point, showing the importance of addressing the actual argument presented. <laughs> Texas Sharpshooter. The Texas Sharpshooter fallacy occurs when a speaker chooses a cluster of data to apply to their argument, or when they find a pattern that they can apply to a presumption. Nicole cherry picks data to fit a hypothesis, ignoring contrary evidence. Leah points out this selective use of data, stressing the importance of considering all relevant information. <laughs> tu quoque. Tu quoque is a fallacy answering criticism with criticism, or turning the argument back around on the other person. It also applies the logic that because someone has done something, that it justifies someone else doing the same thing. Zoe responds to criticism by accusing the critic of the same fault. Emily highlights that this does not address the original issue, reminding us to focus on the argument rather than the arguer. Thanks for watching.